me here and also Tassatu, who have me join the group or the team of uh, new materials here in Links. That's a huge pleasure to be here and uh, to talk a little bit about my work in the last few years. And uh, the title is quite generic and very broad. Uh, it's, it's talk a little bit about my uh, studies on, on producing the calcogenide powders that materials that have a lot of applications you see using like a green chemistry stuff, green chemistry approach. So basically I, I, I organize a presentation about several topics. I start with my introduction and of course just talk a little bit about me and I'm a physicist and I will have my bachelor of 1999 and also do my master's in physics with semiconductor physics using spectroscopy, basically running spectroscopy. And after I, I moved to, to Florianopolis 2001, and since then I'm working with this uh, mechanochemistry approach, and it's called mechanical oil, ball milling, with different names that you see that people are trying to join. And at the moment, I'm a, a full professor at the Department of Physics. Uh, of Federal University of Santa Catarina. I thank you very much for people that allowed me to get this uh, Sebastian here in Europe, Professor Dean here, here from Max Planck Institute of Solid States Research, and Professor Elizabeth for kindness and also a lot of support and um, discussing on science and so on. Um, the whole institution, I just wish to set, show uh, some of the my website where I used to publish the recent papers and after pandemics, of course, there's some virtual meeting room that you can chat and discuss, share information and also very useful to be in contact and to start collaboration with people around. There are some links for different of, uh, departments of the institution, also something related to the secret radiation that I will show you later. And we have also in a graduate program that's very uh, stuff you have like a lot of people work on different areas of physics, uh, almost 70 people in the department, and the, the, the graduate program is a little less, but people are very active on astrophysics, nuclear physics, theoretical, and also solid state in that my area. And just to have you a taste of where I live, that's this is the Brazilian map. And here you can see the Santa Catarina state, that's one of the the, the smallest states in in, in Brazil, but contributes a large uh, part of the GDP of the country. There is also a very good place to live. You can see by the the, the facts here that the lowest economic inequality, illiteracy, and also something that related that with the the colony. Also, they have a lot of immigrations from immigrants from, from Europe, even Sweden, there's some people from Sweden that moved there in the ninth century. And we have like a very nice uh, place, landscape, you also have some highlands that you can find some cold weather, like some snow sometimes. And also uh, in the have a very active industry, and probably the electro motors you have heard about baggy and the compressors also the largest companies in the world that works with this. And it's very interesting. That's uh, one of the, the states that's in the capital, that's Florianopolis, that's a big part of this island and then the little part of the continent. And where the Federal University is hosted, that's something that you have a large number of students, like 32,000 uh, students. Like uh, uh, you, you have some expansion now before uh, um, at about 12 years ago, there is an expansion that more campus of federal universities spread out by the state. So give opportunities for students for different regions of the, the state. And, and you are basically in the middle of Rio uh, Grande do Sul, Sao Paulo, Paraná. So that's in a state that was more traditional on, on different areas like agricultural and have a lot, of, of course, some contribution on, on the industrial point of view and also exportation of some agricultural products. So here's a, some pictures of my favorite place in the island. Here's the uh, Lagoinha do Leste, one of the most 
uh, so to say, there is different kind of places that you go. If you like to crowd, you go to the Mali beach that people like to surf in, and here is more wide place that I prefer. That's this is a small island that's closed. That's about 32 islands. In turn off the big one, we have some lagoons. That's really pleasant place. And here is the, the, the more the downtown, the center where the physics department is located. Here you see the buildings of the chemistry department and the math mats. In between here, you have the refraction lab. Let me show some pictures to you. And here, just to start to show a little of the infrastructure, I have uh, mountains since my 20 years and uh, like 16 years work as professor. We got some funds to get those infrastructure. And basically, the equipments are related with the spectroscopy, with the RAMA. We have some calorimetry, some very nice device that can do simultaneous analysis of Raman and, and, and calorimetry, and also something related with the high pressure, and I will show it in detail. That's the room where the students work with computers, and here is the ball with the mule that I use, like a shaker mule. Here you can see the small device of the, the Raman spectroscopy. Here a, a zoom from the, the uh, optical microscope nearby the, the Lincoln DSC. Here you can see some machine to make the holes and to prepare the samples to put between the, those beautiful diamonds that you can see over here. And this is very special tool. I, I did my PhD in, in Paris, uh, uh, learning about this high pressure setup and how to, to perform those kind of uh, high pressure experiments. It's very useful and in basics of in physics, you can determine some phase transitions, the pressure of state and so on. So I'm supervising this lab. This lab is equipped with the uh, uh, powder um, diffusometer. You have a lot of access, uh, a lot of equipment that you can make, do some in situ high temperature up to uh, 600 uh, Celsius degrees. You have also the last and uh, the best thing that I got before pandemics, that's the robotic army. With this, you work a lot during all the the, the, the restrictions to access the lab that was amazing to have those tools because the students went over there, prepared samples, and I remotely could get some uh, uh, data data during the, the restrictions of pandemics. And here also we have some uh, mute user facilities. That all, I'm very big fan of mute user uh, infrastructure. That's that's one of the gold machine. This is a PPMS physical preferred measurement systems. Very Nice nine tabla, the high field you can have, and DSM that's small field, but for more regular measurements. And you have also a facility that's uh, more uh, uh, for all people on the university, it's a, a central lab for micros microscopy, uh, electronic microscopy. And here <coughs> you can see about 800 kilometers from. Florianopolis that's over here, you can find our, our synchrotron, our, our fourth generation machine, 3 GB. It's very similar to Max 4. Of course, Max 4 has an extra ring. That's a more sophisticated way to, 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 to put the, the, the electrons on the storage ring. Here you use some booster. And you have also a very nice moment. You have seen, uh, about 10 beam lines in the third call open to the users. So it's a very good news. And that's one of the reasons I'm here to share in, uh, information and to learn more about the, the fourth generation machine since Max 4 was open before, and was the pioneer on this. And, and it's, it's important to say that uh, our synchrotron is inside a more a big project that's a National Center of Research on Energy and Materials that uh, is, is uh, also composed by some bios, biosensors lab. We have also a bio renewable, renewable uh, materials lab and also something related with the nanotechnology and we have a lot of, a lot of calls open at the moment for people that would like to do some on nanoscience using the microscope, the powerful infrastructure that they have over there. That's a very interesting. Here are some pictures of my student that was uh, Finished his PhD recently, a couple of years ago. The, oops, sorry. 
the infrastructure is quite oh, I'm so sorry. So it's quite good. You see some the detectors, the, the robot arm that make it possible to change automatically a lot of samples. And that's uh, just to say that's the, our old source that has uh, as have, uh, an old source that was now uh, turn it off because we, we need more energy to run the new machine, the, the CDUS, and with the X is the name of the, 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 the source. He is one of collaborators that worked with Cement, that one good uh, collaborations. Here is what the, the new beam line, the EMA. I'm very glad to, to contribute with the, all those infrastructures that they have on, on, on extreme conditions. I start to, to uh, write proposals in 2004 to do high pressure on, on our synchrotron. And nowadays they have like a, a perfect uh, uh, setup of, for, for external conditions with the high magnetic field and a lot of diamond and blue cells. I'm very glad to, to promote this facility because sometimes even people in Brazil doesn't know exactly what you have. Well, the title is mentioned about copernides. If you see copernides are all the elements of the, this column, 16, but in general, it's more, much more used for sulfides and selenides and tellurides, this copernides term. And I'm used to play with some transition metals and then also doing some semiconducting stuff like gallium selenide, gallium telluride, ingredient selenide, a lot of three. Uh, six or say, and recently I, I, I turned my my research to to explore more some like a bismuth, uh, tellurides and selenides, and uh, antimony is also not one, one of topping that make possible. And you see soon that very useful for put uh, conditions best best conditions for some thermal applications. And here, just to get gave uh, give you some uh, overview, you see some growing the term of copernides research done in scopes. You see different areas: material science and physics, and engineer the most using the but you have also some applications in biochemistry and something on computer science and chemistry also. And you see that's a very uh, uh, so say hot topic at the moment. A lot of people doing work on this kind of materials. And here you see a nice review that was mentioned also, it's quite old, 2017, but mentioned with some of materials that we have produced in, in, in the Federal University of Santa Catarina. And here you saw the list of some applications you have just basically this, this paper is mainly focused on sulfides and selenides. You can see some telluride over here and see the, the detectors used in synchrotron is very common. You have this cadmium telluride. So, uh, here you see thermoelectrics, the copper sulfides, and, and, and chromium sulfide. That's something also uh, I mentioned. Here, there's just some pictures of the setup. This is the mule, as you see picture four. It's a kind of shaker mule. That's many different kind of mule that you can do uh, mechanical chemistry. And this is the one that I use. You, 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 you classify this as a high energy shaker mule. And here's basically a picture of the stainless steel jars so with the balls. That's also stainless steel. We also put the, the reactants in, in some uh, protective atmosphere like argon. But it, it looks like simple, but if you see, you have one about 10 variables to adjust and to test and to play with. That's something very exciting. And here is just something that you can see this running. You have some like a a eight movement of this and in the, the manufacturing website you can see this little move just showing up. So before coming, I have uh, after pandemic field students, and that's one of the point that I and of course when I come back to the lab and I prepare like 29 samples to come to Europe and have something to play with. That's something that I, I <laughs> I was not missing too much because go back to the lab. Uh, so it's better to, to advise the students anyway. Uh, the, the main idea is also always to promote some no equilibrium reactions. And it's very exciting because you can find some new compounds. That's one thing that I'm very glad to see. And my PhD student that was showing up clearly was very happy. And of course, we worked hard and worked a lot to find new crystalline phase. So, uh, this way to, to make the synthesis is a way that you can find 
uh, different things that you will not predict in the phase diagrams. That's really exciting. Of course, there is some little problems on the contaminations, oxygen, and also the building tools with contaminated. But also, there is some very exciting things explaining how the reaction is taking the uh, some melting dry uh, uh, route that you, you can verify. And that very nice paper here uh, in Nature Materials that show up like uh, some predictions that some materials that was left of this. Uh, diagonals that the diagonals correspond to the meal that you have. There's a, some different kind of meals. You, you even can project some some uh, possible uh, driving metal driving melting uh, mechanism that could be help uh, happening. Not uh, more evident than the prediction that would say that you can have by hands. But if you're using treaters and then specs, if you can see here at treaters, it's much less probable. To have this kind of effect. So, this molecular drive was used as a prototype to test this mechanism, this theory. That's very exciting, something that I put on. So, extra motivations here, as I said, there's something that you can explore extreme conditions also to verify if these materials are stable or if the phase transitions are the same as you have on book materials or on films on different kind of. Uh, 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 forms of, of the material with these multiple rights, for example, that I, I'm exploring now. So you can do this also using temperature and the technological applications I mentioned a lot of on thermoelectrics, but then you see later on that you can use these as sensors on electric chemistry and something very exciting in collaboration with my colleagues in, in the park. So talk about application. You know, I like to show this and then to show how the nano, nanomaterials can match and the particles and nanotubes and certain materials can match as in the in the, in the area of functional materials. And there's also the triangles, is the tetraedrons is very this is more classic one when you have those functional functional materials that's someone that you design to some to achieve some uh, uh, application. So we have characterization in the middle and processing that's mechanical so it's also something that does uh, hetero feeding the other information nowadays of course you have like a in silicon research that people do we do a lot of simulation so it's a more modern way that you get information and all computational uh, skills and, and, and infrastructure to get this uh, more dynamics and more like say modern way to, to see and to to preview something. And then here's something very short, just to mention something on uh, uh, nanomaterials, what means nano, what, how people see nano. Of course, there is something related that one of the mentions of materials list have something about 100 nanometers. But I have, I like this definition that nanomaterials have different preferreds compared to with large particles. So see, this is most on the sense or on the view of the functional materials and application and engineer point of view, there's this something uh, on the European Union Observatory defines. I like to use this also, that's Gleiser, uh, of course, proposed this, that's this black solid uh, circles represent the nanocrystalline domains. Uh, and here you have like something more or less like book uh, crystalline behavior, you have these empty circles, it is the interfacial component. They, they call this interfacial, and here you can see some uh, Latin fraction here, high resolution image that suppose that these borders, these inter interfaces are quite complicated. And here is some illustration that this uh, solid or, or more dark circles could give you for X ray fractions like a, some bright peaks, very sharp or more or less sharp graphics depends on the size of the, the crystalline domain. If there is something that is amorphous, you have pattern like this. You can explore a lot of this with total scattering, PDF, or something that I also have been working the last years. And here is the interpretation that you can have from the interpretation company. There's something that's impossible to, to, to define and to see that with X-ray fraction. So that's where it needs a lot of uh, experimental tools to access information from this nanomaterial, nanostructural, nanocrystalline materials. And here there's classical list of the 
status methods that you can see CVD, the physical buffer position, thermal decomposition, hydrothermal percentage is very popular at moments, very interesting. Subothermal and a laser ablation. We have some combustion, the microwave centers that is something very uh, like meal and gas phase, so gel. And of course, you have also some natural, as you saw, aerosols and some a new team here, here in, 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 in links, explore all this, uh, and that's more or less related with those two ways to see the nanomaterials, like it's bottom up and top down. So you just mill is very versatile tool because you can get the bulk material like the bismuth tellurium phase uh, powder that you buy a, a bulk form and can mill it and, and reach like a small uh, surface, small crystalline domain or so small crystallites. Of course, that's as small are the, the crystalline domain, biggest are the surface area, the activity of the material. And also you can do this bottom up. That's more exciting. That's what I used to do. So we use like high purity elemental powders and you mix it and then with the mechanical energy. That's uh, the beginning 20 years ago. I, I expect to have this more or less like amorphous. That's more goal of my supervisor at the moment to that was to work with the radial distribution function that he was expert on. He used a synchrotron, he used a lot of synchrotron to have this large Q uh, range data, but we have a huge surprise to find like some iroselenides that was one of the first alloys that I, I synthesized and I'm still being used and showing some applications. And if you think about milling or, or, or this mechanical approach, you see that it's matched with the civilization history. That's something that you use for all day life and something also very useful in the industry, especially in mining stuff. Of course, uh, you can see some examples on, on pharmaceutical industry, you use a lot, and then ceramics, a lot of applications. And here's the, 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 the time that was something that sent now papers that the guy started to call this like a mechanical alloy. And, and it was most concerning to, to, to spread some ethylene oxide on, on this metal alloy, so make this super alloys, mainly applications on, on, on power uh, industry, these turbines, also the, the aviation and the, the spatial uh, spacecraft and, and planes as something that was the RDS, like oxide dispersion super alloys. And uh, also you, you see something very interesting to explore on, on mechanical chemistry is also in Struzum. So we can do this by shaker meal and the collisions of the ball, but you can use some extrusion. That's very interesting way to, to play with this uh, and also get different materials. Here is some nickel based alloys. Uh, one of the goals to, to my, my first system that I choose, the iron selenium, for example, you see that they have very large melting points. So uh, mechanochemical root uh, synthesis is also a very clever way to get those alloys without using a lot of energy. You don't need to, to, to melt the iron, for example, in more than 1,000 degrees, and then selenium would be like a gas. It would be very complicated stuff. You need to seal those powders and, and, and ampoules, and something that's very important and very easy to get on, on, on the meal. Uh, you can expand also the, the, the solid solutions of sometimes some immiscible uh, metals can be put together and then make some different, uh, like a morphose phase is also, and of course, then on the crystalline with so-called nanomaterials. So mechanical alloying is in fact mechanical chemistry. So there's a, you know, the terminology on the literature, you see there's something very <coughs> not confusing, but there's a different ways. And uh, even recent papers trying to put all together and to show that they also engineer all, like to say the triple chemistry, the, the chemistry of the surface, also related with a, a, a lot of uh, this mechanical process. And this is the first time that was registered something that was the liquid metal of energy, it was mercury. It's a very special way to get that, as I told you, the, that's look like simple stuff, but there's a very sometimes uh, uh, 
details on the recipe to get the final result. And that was one of the, the disciples of uh, Aristotle was one of the first guy that long, long time ago that did this. And here you see some uh, the evolution of citations of these terms. I, I did some review recently and it looks more or less like this in the this publication and the different terms you see it here I didn't include term, uh, terminology but there is a, also a hot top and also there is some nice comments or nice publication in 2019 about the, how these innovations could be like a change word technique and after that you can see a lot of or even before you see some something on, on the nanoparticles with that now technology something on pharmaceuticals and you see some commercial uh, drugs are selling the pharmacies uh, the drugstore is using those kind of approach uh, here you see some reviews about that and also very interesting and very exciting thing on chemistry at the moment that's something that you can have some main groups you can use this for uh, this molecular synthesis that's very nice People doing this in gases, making re reactions with gases. Uh, you see some reviews on the, those books uh, dedicated to this and mainly called it, as I mentioned, on some green chemistry. So it is very uh, recognized as a good, good way to get some of those um, materials. And this is very nice, the, the beginning in January. I, I like the, the title of the paper that's like more philosophical way that touch or not touch, uh, showing that the influence is very sensitive. If someone touch the balls, they have some different reactions on polymorphous or carbamazepine. That's one of the drugs that was, uh, and they did like very systematic. Uh, I like the, the follow distribution research. So they had a lot of innovation on, on, on this field. And just a summary that you know, mechanical chemistry have applications of many different areas. I used to play with the, some collaborators that arrived to us for x ray fashion in general, but I always try, oh, let's try to mute something. Let, let's try to put some high energy <laughs> force so to see how, how your material could move or could change. Uh, of course, uh, I would like to share with you a little or more specific on, on the applications of thermoelectricity. And you see people playing with this uh, also for uh, photovoltaics. You see some large scale, some industrial scale uh, uh, setups that are, are, are put in, in practicing. That's very nice. This is one also, it's more related also with the milling and also the pressing. So some, something very important to, to get those good figure of merits for these materials. I will explain about figure of merit what it means, but how good are the thermoelectric it is. Uh, and you see this setup was proposed in, in Korea. That's very nice one. And you see that very, uh, the, the, the way to scale up also is done on the advantage if you're using this mechanical chemistry in groups. And to characterize, I, I always, consider that the head of all characterization is X-ray diffraction. To see uh, the synthesis itself, to see the reaction, to see the contamination, and also to explore more and more the microstructure, so to say. I, I mentioned this as the crystal size, the microstrain, and isotropy is something like very nice to explore, and also imaging in this uh, pictography, tomography that you can do on those for generation synchrotrons something related with the head of this uh, chart that I like to use. And also chemical analysis, also direct view of the morphology, of course, that you probably you know uh, about the, the TEM, the transmission electron microscopy. You see the size, you can determine the size and the shape of the nanoparticles, but the, the, the statistically, you just use to see very, very small fraction of percentage. So that's way and then this approach that you used to, to get from line building of track peaks is much more representative. And also thermoanalysis, very useful. You can complement. Uh, and the spectroscopy using X-rays is also extremely useful and very excited to play with the, something that I learned here in Linux with amazing course, immense seminars to make a lot of images with 
uh, sends like like SAS image that's very exciting to try this on CU, so maybe come back here to Max 4. And also electrical and magnetical and transport in general, it's very, very important uh, characterization, especially, especially uh, on thermal conductivity that you connected those uh, with electrical transport. It's something very interesting. And, and the spectroscopy woman, I, 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 that's very versatile technique. I, I love to play with this. Of course, that was the first contact with the uh, research that was used in Rama. And, and, and that's very nice also the bridge that you can have between the crystallography and the spectroscopy using DFT and some uh, theoretical approach. That's really, really amazing. And here just a schematic is showing like a powder diffractogram. So you have the density, the angle, and if you have some large crystalline domains, you have sharp peaks. If you have small crystalline domains, you have gold peaks. And if between, you have probably some contributions on the background. In general, people use just to get the, the broadening, use sometimes, I'm very upset with seeing this, get the, would not consider any instrumental uh, contribution and so to say, and, and, and get the average of crystalline size. So they are uh, uh, subestimating a lot of the, the, the microstructure. So what I do in the last 20 years was to, uh, to improve my skills and also training people to see this more deep, to make this peak profile modeling more seriously using this cloud and also total scattering. And for this, mainly total scattering is synchrotron is mandatory and very important. That's what, why also I'm here and very glad also to start to look this with some neutron data as I mentioned something that's very uh, happy to be here at the moment at the right place right moment <laughs> and just to I don't know how long I, I take but I, I start to show some of the results that one of the applications of this nickel telluride that I mentioned I use a lot of of, of this calcogenite with including tellurium and nickel and the application was very exciting with people from chemistry department that Professor Joss was one of my partners and uh, Joel was a PhD student at the moment. So you produce very cheap and very easy way to determine some molecules, some bio molecules, and then also very exciting to play with those. That's Santa Catalina plays in the industrial, uh, you know, lines and then also my mind so it's some easy way to to and this work is also very interesting it was one of seminal uh, works used to also nickel to rights uh, you have this simultaneous electrochemical detection of these two biomolecules is very very important on biomedicine and a lot of diagnosis and also to control a lot of things and, and instead of applications you also always looking for the, the the morphology the microstructure also some uh, magnetic behavior of this material and to try to understand the mechanism that drive this nice behavior of this very cheap and very easy way to prepare these uh, sensors. And here is, as I mentioned, the iron, iron selenide was the first uh, in 2002, let's look back. <laughs> that was my first paper production on my PhD. And after that, my, my student uh, more recently start to review and to try to find a specific uh, crystalline phase that was uh, uh, mentioned and was named that a superconductor one. We test a lot of by the stability, how stable are those uh, is, is products. And here you see that I mentioned in, 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 in the synchronous division and I decided to put in a little bit more. You, you did not see clearly the, the superconducting position, but in DFC, maybe you can see something. On, on, on the transport, you have a lot of probably possible problems. You do not see superconducting related with the contacts and so on, the, the experiment and the measurement itself. And modeling, when you talk about modeling the microstructure, I, I love to show this collaboration that involves people from Italy. Cervellino is one of those guys on FLS on the, the Swiss light source that developed a very clever way to, to, to deal with the microstructure using total scattering. So they have a, a very nice protocols to get the data, collect data from capillaries, air scattering, a lot of very 
clever way to see that uh, the so say like a, a different way than with gold method to see and you can see a lot of contributions for anomalous scattering uh, and more say diffuse scattering let's say and this system in special iron tellurium you see that you find here and maybe the five five phase diagram shows that you have no rich iron uh, phase reveal on the phase diagram and, and, and the compound you will discover so to say is more on this region that's like a, a there's some reporting may doubt that we show that could be a very rich uh, iron telluride phase but it's not reliable and here we did a lot of measurements using different and tuning the composition very carefully and also do the microstructural characterization, considering this micro strain in a way that you can see some isotropic effect here. You see that a lot of misfitting in high angle, high Q, uh, uh, bright peaks. If you put unstrained, it's even worse. If you try to see some micro strain in, a, in the basal plane, you will still improve, you will start to improve. And if you include some in the basal micro strain and you see some anisotropy of all the micro strain. So that's one of the like most like uh, efforts to do the microstructural characterization, use the DWC approach that Federica was in Denmark at the time, uh, how it offers university. So she did an amazing job on, on this characterization. And also you complement, as I mentioned, you have access to do some high temperature in situ X-ray spectrum measurement, and you did that at the lab, it looks good department, also you did that at synchrotron, the UVX source at the time, so you, you propose also some phase transitions for this new phase, so that's one of the contributions that I like to show. This guy is one of the bright students I, I have. He did his master with me, and now he is in, here in Europe, in, in Italy. And he was very dedicated in, to show and to learn much more on the instrument, how the instrumentation can influence on the data. So you see different mixers, the detector, the sample, and, and the, the, the optics, the different detectors, if you add the monochromator, how to play with this. You have here a typical uh, uh, pattern. And here you have this uh, way to see the peak profile is more deeply. And you will have like a lot of convolution of different uh, equations or different uh, form to, to deal with those source emission instrument profile of course that you want to see about the you want to learn about the, the sample itself but you need to understand how the experiment is done so i love instrumentation i see a lot of physics behind this and that's why i like to play with the students marcelo prepared this just to show how convolution of two different you know we have like a hat very popular kind of uh, convolution used and also something with the exponential k and there is some uh, very popular way to call this is the fundamental parameter approach and uh, that includes most here you can see graphically or more uh, visual approach of this contribution of the source here is the contributions for the instrument itself the hat you can see more or less in the finite x-ray uh, source with you can see some contribution of the optics here you can play with the, the, the two tails. If you have some standard measurements and you see the tail, uh, the, the big profile, and you see exactly something like this some, some, some uh, shoulder, a very flat shoulder that's very interesting. You can model all this. But of course, as I mentioned, you, you, you're more interested on, on the micro structural contribution. So to get the intensity on the big profile, you have to come with a lot of information and this is not uh, new uh, something than the 1979 the include the alexander book it's my favorite one to see all this contribution but of course this is all implemented on these new uh, suites like topaz Marcelo is a big fan of topaz and work with the all this guy that's one of the, those guys that have the privilege to get some demo and very uh, uh, updates versions of topaz and here, a little bit of the, the system that Marcel worked with, it's more 
transition metal like cobalt and tellurium. He explored the beta phase. He also very dedicated you to, to analyze the influence of knife. You have no knife, you have a lot of air scattering. It's very difficult to, to identify some impurities like uh, even the iron. The iron comes from the, the milling tools. And he's very dedicated, he's very obsessive to, to get as better as possible. So you get like a final product of more than 90% of this uh, cobalt phase. And also the approach of the microstructure, he of course used like a uh, dip by share or, or share equation, of course, is always there, but he was more dedicated on seeing something that you are uh, mentioned that is uh, something on, on the stability, the predictability, of course, but also the, the, the innovation of Marcelo and best contributions is mainly on seeing the possibility to modeling the size as an, an, an isotropy. Uh, uh, size of the crystallite. So it's modeling the shape of the crystallites. And he went deep on these uh, calculations on this modeling. And, and it was, as a result, you can see some improvements on the, the analysis. Of course, improvements are very, very, you know, uh, you need to, to be very, very careful on the measurements. So that's why, again, I mentioned that the synchrotron radiation is very mandatory. We got very high quality data, and here you can see almost no noise. And he see he saw some improvement and then modeling something on an isotropy of these cobalt telurides. Here it makes analysis comparing with different uh, uh, reference, and you see like a, a differences on the distance between tellurium, and it's more or less. Uh, Resumed and then summary in a lot of publications with this master uh, work. And for the end, I, I, I have also thermal electricity as a motivation to work with this methyl telluride, but of course, there is a different applications and very fancy topics, let's say topological isolators. We have a lot of these methyl rides, of course, they use more careful. There's a single crystals and so on to, to, to explore those kind of images on Narfax. I saw a very beautiful image from, from the, 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 the dispersion uh, the trunk structure. And also we have some superconductivity on you know, some phases that are induced by pressure in spin materials. That's very, very nice if you, if you go to it. Uh, and, uh, why thermoelectrics? There's more, uh, you know, I like not only to use green chemistry, but see applications that, of course, could contribute on, on, on the on the use of some source of energy that we use. I saw in many talks here during my stay here in links, people showing that the heat is something, some energy that you you release and you don't use, and you, you do that at home in the industry and in the environment itself. So thermoelectrics is something that's not new, but like two centuries people know about the effect, but of course there's some bottlenecks that's maybe related with the material science. And that there is some very good applications and here you can see, I like to, to stir a little about the helium, see the prototype that I from 22 centuries ago, uh, inspired by Arsted uh, experiments, he defined it and he saw that the compass also sensitized by this current that was uh, uh, transported by the from the feet to the cold fingers, so to say. And as I mentioned, two hundred years before, you are still seeing progress in the thermoelectric device, the challenges you have. Then the dismute right was discovered. By, by CBEC, but it's still being applied in industrial and commercial applications. You can see the different geometries to explore, like a harvesting is very popular. Even some automobile industry use that. that uh, for example, even for comfort in your seats and in very fancy cars, you have some heaters that are from using for thermoelectric device. But there is some very fancy, very uh, futuristic and there is people also consider that artificial intelligence will be take energy itself because one of the most released uh, energy from the you know, IT machines is heat. So you can 
we cover the uh, the autonomous on you know this like a mirror right we're afraid to read about this but they should be very independent from us and here is i like the, to see this because here it's kind of it's the fission of the, the, the machines the thermal dynamics based time dynamics but they can apply this also and here is the zt that theory of merit that i showed before and here is the the the, 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 the feedback coefficient that uh, Name it in amination of feedback, but you have also some transport of the electrons and also the thermal conductivity that you have some electronic and less contribution. Uh, the less contribution is some part where you can play with, and, and then the structuring is mainly to play with the, the increasing of this less contribution to, to, to keep the, the heat and, and the cold and the, and the uh, and the, the high temperature regions separated. You don't you don't want to and, and uh, thermal performance of the devices. You need to keep both sides in different temperatures. You need for a, uh, any machine thermodynamics. You see that you have some uh, high temperature reservoir and then a cold reservoir. And here you see some time evolution since the night sixteen. And here you see the gap. The gap is because people don't believe that it can improve more the efficiency. But nowadays, you see the, the boom of interest in a lot of people we work with, and you see that recently uh, many different systems also use it, not only bismuth telluride. And here you see some nice uh, uh, paper that was mainly resuming and or summary what I mentioned that we need to play. With the non structuring to improve the thermal conductivity and decrease the, the change in the difference of temperature uh, conduction with mountain. So, here is the two systems that I am seeing at the moment. Here, the phase diagram is very rich phase diagram on bismuth tailoring. I focus on these two compositions, and here is you see the most popular. So, the approach or the innovation of my recent work is try to see in the different alloys or different phase. What's possible to, to improve in terms of, of, of efficiency of the thermoelectrics? And you see, it's a very complicated system in terms of crystallography because all the phases can be seen as this infinitely adaptive series of these blocks. You can have a lot of uh, a, a stacking of these uh, layers and the bismuth to the room. So it's represented here as this uh, empty uh, rectangle with the bismuth tube. And this uh, shell uh, gray rectangle is, is the blocks with, with the telluride. So different phase with different compositions have almost the same uh, structure, the same uh, uh, trigonal structure. So the for X-ray diffraction is very complicated to separate it and to discriminate it between this phase. This is just calculated pattern from the lab base. But here you can see our results and also point out one of the problems because bit tellurium is very added, it's very sensitive to, to air. So you, you use and you make some tests, you use some tellurium that was not so pure, so to say. And in the case of this, in this case, it, it's, it's bismuth, that's the same. Uh, you have quite large quantity of oxides and here is tellurium, I'm sorry. And you see you have one of the possibilities not using as raw material to use granular source with the granular source you see less contamination by oxides and the most interesting is even if we start some oxide when we have less than one hour of milling you got the reaction so we started with bismuth with little oxide we start with tellurium with a lot of oxides but after less than one hour we mainly get only bismuth and tellurium of course there is some small peaks especially on this this uh, sample but you've got the same uh, composition, but now using granular tellurium, you almost see only the bismuth and tellurium phase. So it's very uh, sensitive to the, the contaminations. And here I am exploring more the, the rich side of the phase diagram. That's why we can have some bismuth to tellurium phase. That if you see the, the, the patterns are very difficult to, to discriminate between that. And just to, to show you a little bit how my samples look like, 
especially because the type that I mentioned about the simple are powder, but you can see huge particles in the CM. You can do this uh, chemical analysis. You see, of course, a little contamination of oxygen. You see some contamination from iron that sometimes is more specific in some uh, grains. That's something that's very interesting. And also the shape of the more close, looking more close together uh, with this, this, this is the, the, something that I expected, something that's very agglomerated with some nano domains, of course. But surprisingly, on um, Stuttgart, we start to see some beautiful structures, very, very well shaped, like more or less like a round shape. Here you see this Instagram, like a mean size of uh, 25 nanometers. And like quite a broad, of course, size distribution, but you can see also very beautiful uh, particles, nanoparticles. You see the size of the here, it's very more layered, almost single layer. And that's very interesting for seeing this uh, kind of material. So there's many different ways to explore. Uh, about perspective, so recently, uh, uh, very soon, you will have some this real time measurements that he the picture of a mule that's in the SRF that's 2010 Rod Mountain and to, to follow in real time the reaction. Here is a different setup you can see in SRS, and, uh, and you can also use different uh, ways to, to explore and to reach uh, and to follow the, the chemical reactions with X rays. And here is our proposal that was inspired on this paper. You can see for hard materials that you need also the bill in the beam line. You can need, you need, of course, a lot of flux, uh, hard X rays in my case. And you need some uh, widows in the, the vessels. The vessels are cut here to, to allow the X ray uh, bypass. And here are some adaptations of the meal that you have at the Desi. There is some nice calculations on this paper showing the influence, even of the, the shape of the arms of the shakers are very nice. And Claudia was my collaborator. I'm very glad to, to have uh, access to, to his setup, her setup, and her development on this. And now you see for these hard materials, it's mandatory to have this metal ring. So soon we will go, Marcelo will join me, Paul is Kadi also giving support and of course for the data analysis before it'll be very important. Okay, I take long. I don't know how long I talk about but I'm good. Anyway, I have some new perspective that I'm very excited with the news and this is from Brazil. We have like a, in July we get announced something that we'll put some money on on, on moot proposal reactor. We have some project that's quite a long time ago, like 15 years ago, and recently with this government changing, we have a lot of good news coming from Brazil, and you have this related with this investments of, of, of science and technology. And it's in here you can see that Sirius are synchrotron that was a miracle that during the pandemic, all the crisis, the, the toilet crisis, the guys was managing the. the the budget for series it was open and now we will be have a lot of a little more input to put more B lines accessible to the, 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 the users. And here you see collaborations. You know, Argentina is not also in a good moment in the economy, but they are inaugurating some reactor that will be all more or less like all oh, our third megawatts open pool reactor that will be uh, open in Argentina, and there's some collaboration that will be done and here are some you see how long the projects are are running for and our, our reactor is most proposed mainly because the, the isotopes and if for medicine in Brazil is very dependent to import all those very expensive raw materials to, to, to diagnose so one of the proposals of the most the reactor our reactor is to implement this and at, at the moment you have all of this budget to make some you know, to put the, the project on the paper, which like that. And here, more recently, they, they, they got even the plan, the place where they would like to, to put the, the, the lab. And you see here the synchrotrons about 135 kilometers from Houston Paul State, here in Anopolis. So 
So it, it, the idea is more or less like you have here in, in Loom. That's amazing. You have you know so complementary source from X-ray and neutrons. And here just showing how uh, the, some reactors I know I learned here with the one of the schools, Nordic schools and Sweden school of neutrons that were closed, but that's maybe could open some opportunity to Brazil to keep this collaboration. And that's why I would like to be in touch with people from links, ESS, you know, people that could be very, very important on the development and the human research, uh, uh, you know, training and so on. And in Brazil, it's almost quite good on, on, on get this. We have the, the our, our crucial uh, uranium, so you can get the, the fuel on our, our plants to purify uranium in Brazil. So that's very, uh, so to say, the project could be also implemented with the people, even with no much budget. There are a lot of people doing correct calculations, planning the instrumentation costs. Of course, you have the source, you need to play, and you have a budget to, to, to build the instruments to do the fraction, the scattering, so on. I was so intense, and then, uh, the same moment it was announced this, and people from the UK, there's some Brazilian on, on ISIS and, and, and MSC. So they start this, this uh, webinars, and their skill series in August and September. I attend one of them and the series two, they ask for people to show up what they are planning to do with the, the neutrons. And I was very glad to learn a lot of here in links with the school that will offer uh, in August. So here the chat, we discuss with the people and they were very uh, kind and they motivate me to look for and I start to, to try to understand a little bit more how I can apply some and elastic scattering to see uh, all those uh, effects on, on this bismuth right so those papers uh, show clearly and even up the crystallized point of view we get more acute uh, range more intense peaks of the, the, the this compound that could be very useful to discriminate it between the phase that i have and also to give you more uh, information to do the microstructure model and of course, uh, you can access the thermal conductivity with the neutrons that in a more efficient way. And here, just to illustrate it, here is are the calculated patterns of different phase that I have in my samples with, with X-rays. But if you use neutrons, you see you gain a lot of information in the high gain or high Q uh, range. That's our expectations. So more good news. We have some fun. People in the UK are fine financing. We have a funding for three years that will give some Brazilians opportunity to go to ISIS and perform the, 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 the research. So I, I, I apply two proposals one for uh, Mary, that the inelastic scattering gene is the diffraction. So that's very exciting to be involved with this. I don't know uh, how possible it will be, but I might. In the future, I would like to have this also. Why not? Brazilian access to ESS. Why not? I, I come with you guys. I hope that you can support me. And thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Kindness to hear me. Sorry if you extrapolated with the time, but that is. Thank you.